Hello, my name is Akram Burton. I'm the executive director for the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. We're here today in the Brown Forman Great Hall, and I'm going to take you on a tour of some of the exhibitions that we have up. But before I do that, I wanted to give you a little bit of history about this building or about this campus. Uh, the campus comprises of four buildings. Um, we're now in, the, as I said, the Great Hall, uh, the Brown Foreman Great Hall. And then behind us, we have the lecture gallery um, and the pavilion lobby. Then we have building B and building C. And I'll take you on a tour of those areas uh, as we go. The history of this building, that it used to be an old trolley barn here in Louisville. It did and serviced most of the trolleys that, uh, um, that were out on the, on the road. Um, and then after a period of time, it uh, turned into heavy machinery. Um, uh, then the building or campus or the buildings on the campus became in disrepair. Um, and then in the mid nineties, um, you know, there was a proposal to actually look at uh, developing this into the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. Um, where the, the, the campus is located in historic Russell community. Um, this is where many of the African American movers and shakers of the 19th and 20th century lived. Um, I just mentioned a few, Albert E. Mizik, who was actually responsible for the development of the West End Library, the only and the oldest black library located in the United States. Um, and when I say black library, you have to understand during the time of his development, uh, black people were not allowed to enter libraries. Uh, so we developed our own library and the West End Library, library is a very famous library. Um, so that's just some, some history. Uh, there are also um, other uh, key areas um, or key things that I wanna discuss, but as we go by, I will we'll talk about that. But right now I'm gonna take you on a tour. First, I'm gonna take you over to And They're Off, which is a uh, exhibit about black jockeys. So let's go and see that. So you have the And They're Off, which is a, an exhibit about black jockeys. And just directly behind me, you, you'll see the list of uh, jockeys, black jockeys that were very dominant in the Kentucky Derby. Um, you have Oliver Lewis, William Billy Walker, Isaac Murphy, Alonzo Lino, Lonnie Clayton, James Soup Perkins, Willie Sims, Jimmy Wingfield, Wallace Hicks and Jimmy Lee. Um, and of course, one of the most celebrated uh, black jockeys was Isaac Murphy. He won the Kentucky Derby three times. Um, this exhibit basically talks about the struggles that the black jockeys went through um, and the, the racism that they experienced. And many of them became successful jockeys overseas because uh, after a period of time, um, it was very difficult for them to keep uh, or to stay in uh, the horse racing in the United States because of the racism. Um, so what I'll do is take you in and let you see some of the uh, images and pictures. And then from here, I'll take you over and we'll see two centuries of black Louisville. Okay, so this exhibit is, it was developed by the Kentucky Derby Museum. And uh, was given to us um, and we've had it in storage for quite some time. And we decided that, that we wanted to bring this out and, and exhibit. Um, so these are large panels. Um, we've had quite a few schools come in. Quite a few people really love the exhibit. Um, so we, we plan to um, have it up until the end of uh, December of 2016. 
um, and we'll periodically bring it out at times to, to exhibit, especially during the Derby. Um, but behind us, you'll see pictures of, of uh, Frederick Douglass. Um, um, he was a very prominent uh, African-American orator and very much involved in uh, uh, the anti-slavery uh, movement. Um, also traveled extensively throughout uh, Europe. Um, and so we, we exhibit him here just to kind of uh, talk about him as an icon during the Jim, Jim Crow era. Because again, I was explaining to you that uh, many of the jockeys had to leave the country because of the racism that they experienced. <clears throat> and then you see um, pictures here of, of the various jockeys that uh, we talked about uh, earlier um, and, and, uh, uh, and along with other, uh, other jockeys. Um, it, it talked about the migration. This exhibit also talks about the migration of jockeys from various parts of the, uh, of the world um, to come in and to participate in uh, this uh, event. You know, of course, everybody knows there's a lot of money uh, uh, connected with the, uh, you know, Derby. Um, Derby, I understand, makes more money than Christmas. Um, and uh, so this is a, just one example of the exhibition. We have more images outside, so I'll take you out there and we'll look at that. Okay, well, we're in front of uh, panels about uh, Jimmy Wingfield. Jimmy Wingfield uh, was a, a very successful jockey overseas. He, he uh, ran races in Russia, France, and Poland. Um, so this, this section of the exhibition talks about his success um, and what, what he went through and how he was uh, uh, basically um, uh, you know, treated when he was in, in France. He was treated uh, as if he was a, uh, you know, a king. Um, and this is typical of, of many of uh, African Americans that went overseas. They were probably received better overseas than they were in their own uh, place of birth. Um, so Jimmy Wingfield is a very, very uh, uh, important uh, uh, figure in, in horse racing. Um, and I understand that his daughter is still, um, or his granddaughter, I'm, uh, I'm not quite sure, I think it's his daughter, um, is still uh, living um, and has given a number of interviews and oral histories, which we are going to try to, um, you know, link up with and, and uh, embellish uh, this exhibition in the future. Okay, so now we're going to walk over to the exhibit entitled Two Centuries of Black Louisville. Um, as we're walking over, I'll give you a, a basic overview. Two Centuries of Black Louisville actually was a, a project that was uh, developed by Ken Clay, Merv Osmussen, and um, J. Blaine Hudson. Um, these uh, images were um, actually in the Courier Journal archives, as well as in the U of L archives, and um, so what we did is we put the, uh, an ex exhibition was put together, um, and uh, with the generous support of Christy Brown, we were able to have them framed, and now it is part of our permanent collection. The book of Two Centuries Black Louisville is uh, uh, in every school library in Louisville, public as well as parochial school library. And uh, this, this exhibit is, is very well received. And uh, I'll take you in, you'll take a look at some of the pictures. We're in the uh, exhibit of two, two, two Centuries of Black Louisville, and um, what I really like about this exhibit is that uh, it really shows the, the, the pride and 
uh, on one hand, if you look at the pictures on this side, you see the pride that existed in the African-American community uh, here in Louisville. Um, the various events and celebrations and what have you. Um, sports teams. Um, it was a very vibrant community. Um, families. Um, on this side, you see more of about what we had to do in order to um, struggle against inequality and di di uh, discrimination. Um, we have a picture of Dr. Martin Luther King along with his brother. You have the uh, protests of Blue, the Blue Boar downtown Louisville, which we have a historic marker uh, place there. Um, a number of different uh, key, key moments in the history of uh, Black Louisville. Uh, the inauguration of Chief White, the first black uh, commissioner, police commissioner here in Louisville. So it's a very comprehensive exhibit. Um, this is just a represented number of uh, images that are included in the book, Two Centuries of Black Louisville. And I really uh, would encourage anyone to uh, get a copy of that book, buy a copy of that book. Um, and as I said, um, this book is in every school library, um, both public and parochial libraries. Um, and it's very well received and being used a lot in the curriculum. It's uh, added resource that's much needed in the schools. So at this point, I'm gonna take you over and we're gonna look at the exhibit of Great Black Kentuckians uh, developed by the Commission, the Kentucky Commission on Human Rights. Okay, so here in the South Gallery, we have Great Black Kentuckians. Uh, and you can see we have a number of, of very key individuals that have very significant in the history of uh, Black Kentucky. Um, we have people like Muhammad Ali. Um, we have people like um, Colonel Charles Young. Uh, we have a number of people, Moneta uh, Sleet, who was a very well-known photographer, famous photographer nationally. There are a number of key, key people. I mentioned earlier about Albert E. Mizik. We have Ed Hamilton, um, and the list goes on. Um, and they continually add to this, uh, the most recent addition to Great Black Kentuckians was uh, Dr. J. Blaine Hudson, who passed away. Um, he was a former Dean uh, for Arts and Sciences at the University of Louisville. Um, and a very uh, well um, respected historian, was very instrumental in uh, helping to develop the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. So this is the rotunda area, um, and we're going to be developing this into an area where um, we'll have a, a stellar uh, experience, if you will, because um, our brand is many rubber, rivers to cross, and um, much of that um, is connected with the Underground Railroad and many people who traveled on the Underground Railroad years ago depended on uh, astronomy um, and the, the alignment of the stars in order to um, find their direction. Um, when we talk about the North Star, you know, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper. I mean, these are all things that um, were taught and ways in which to guide them when they were traveling at night, because in daytime they had to lay low. It was only at night that they were able to move around, and much of that was uh, they were dependent on the stars, the alignment of the stars. Um, we also above this is the uh, what we're going to have is the genealogy center, um, where people can come in and do genealogical research. Um, and we're very excited about that. 
we're in the process now of uh, acquiring the furniture and the equipment so that we can get started in that area. So that's the things, those are things to, to really look forward to. Um, we're developing exhibitions um, to address many of the um, historical moments um, that African Americans have experienced. For instance, we're going to develop an exhibition around the transatlantic slave trade. We're also going to look at, you know, slavery in Kentucky, um, and then of course the Underground Railroad. Um, and we are working right now to develop an exhibition on civil rights in Kentucky. Um, Kentucky is what we would refer to as a, a river city. And so it connected, it was a connector between the North and the South. And uh, there's some very rich history here um, uh, as it relates to resistance to slavery. And um, so we're very excited to, you know, really begin to uh, open that up to the public because that's uh, information that has really not been out there for the general uh, public. Uh, so look forward to that. Here in the Great Hall is where we have many of our events. Um, we we uh, rent our facilities out to a number of organizations and individuals for weddings and birthday parties, uh, celebrations of all types. Um, we have bar mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, um, and uh, sometimes you can come in here and, and they totally the event planners just totally transform the place and you, you don't even realize that it's the same place. Um, so we've had Prince Charles here. We've had the First Lady here. We've had former President Clinton here. Um, it, this has been a, a, a really important place of uh, attraction here in West Louisville. And uh, we're really proud um, to be able to uh, bring um, positive images uh, to West Louisville. And uh, we're also working very hard to become an economic engine for the community. Um, so really encourage you to visit the facility. Um, got a lot of great things planned and hope that you do plan to come to the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. Okay, so we're here in the courtyard at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. And as I said before, we have many buildings on this campus. So over here is what we refer to as the connector. The connector actually was not here originally. Um, and basically they, they erected this and it connects all of the other buildings. Um, so for instance, the connector, and then above you have all of them uh, where the administrative offices for Kentucky Center for African American Heritage is located. Um, and then uh, over here uh, to the uh, left, we have um, Building D, which is offline right now, but we're in the process of developing uh, it into a multimedia production facility uh, where we can possibly do uh, virtual reality um, and as well as other kinds of uh, filmmaking and video making, and radio, and theater, and you name it. Um, and then over here behind me, we have building, this long building here is building B. Um, and we have a number of different uh, uh, ideas right now. We're still working on them. But one of the things we wanna do is to make this into kind of a music uh, venue. Um, but eventually I think it may turn out to be a research uh, uh, space because one of the things that we really need to do is to provide space for people to come in and do research on uh, African-American uh, history and heritage. And then over here, uh, we have building, uh, what, what we used to call Building C, but now it's called the Samuel Plato Academy, uh, which has been dedicated to uh, um, learning how to do historic preservation of homes. Um, and it's a training uh, facility. It has state-of-the-art state equipment. Um, We've already had one cohort that is going through from JCTC um, has graduated. Um, and um, they, when they graduate, they get a, a certificate uh, certification in historic uh, um, uh, home uh, building and construction. 
So we're in the uh, pavilion lobby, which is part of the connector that I was talking about. And uh, we have a number of events in the pavilion lobby and actually we're set up for an event tomorrow. We're gonna actually have Angela Davis here. We're gonna have a breakfast for Angela Davis. So we've set up already um, for that event tomorrow. Um, but also I wanted to just point out, you'll see that there's a number of pictures here uh, highlighting key, key uh, people uh, that have contributed to the history of uh, Kentucky African Americans. For instance, you have uh, Ed Hamilton, Muhammad Ali, um, also highlighting the um, uh, Ann Braden Center. Um, you have a picture at the top here um, that pretty much shows the uh, people standing out front of the Carl uh, Braden Memorial Center. Um, but one of the, I think one of the key things or cornerstones of of the Kentucky Center of African American Heritage is the story about Mary Cunningham Smith. And many people have heard of Rosa Parks, but not that many people have heard about Mary Cunningham Smith. Mary Cunningham Smith is particularly important here in, in Louisville, Kentucky, because in, uh, was it 1879, four years after the abolition of slavery, her and her stepson tried to enter a donkey drawn trolley to board a donkey drawn trolley on 8th and Broadway. Um, and she was thrown off because she refused to get up out of her seat for a white person. She then went home um, and her and her husband filed suit. Um, and the case went all the way to Kentucky Supreme Court and also to federal court. And they won in 1873. Um, in this case, uh, we know uh, at the time she did pretty much the same thing that Rosa Parks did, which was to challenge the discriminatory laws of the transportation uh, um, uh, company at that time. And there were many other uh, challenges that went on the interstate transportation as well. And we do know that uh, this was a concerted effort by the community um, to really challenge these laws until these laws were abolished. So Mary Cunningham Smith, Mary Victoria Cunningham Smith is our Rosa Parks. Okay, so over here in the lobby, I wanted to point out our logo. As you can notice, the logo is made up of four uh, outlines of the map of the state of Kentucky, which forms kind of a silhouette, if you will, of, uh, of what we refer to as the griot, all right? Griot is a term uh, that is used in Africa um, to pretty much describe a storyteller, a, an older person that has all of the stories of the village, of the city, of the people. Um, and that's what we feel that we do, is that we are telling the story of you know, African and African-American people. And then in the middle of the silhouette, you see lines and dots and uh, what have you. And that basically is referring to many rivers to cross, all right? And the trials and tribulations that we've gone through. Um, so I just wanted to point out our logo here. Um, but this is basically what the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage is. And, uh, you know, really welcome you to um, come visit. Um, we got a lot of great things in store here um, and hope that you will come down and uh, enjoy the various exhibitions that we have. Um, please um, don't hesitate to contact us at 502-583-4100, or you can go to our website, www.kcaah.org. And again, thank you. Mm -hmm.